Hey guys, Anthony Pietrabona here back with another market update. In today's video, we're going to go over where the market went. We're going to go over a couple of trades we took this past week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. It took me three years to become a consistently profitable trader. Lots of trial and error. Lots of courses taken, but you know, over time, you'll get there and you'll get better. So stick with it. If you're new to trading, it's definitely something you want to stick with. It's something that's going to take a couple years. It's something that you have to try over and over again. Lots of lessons are learned. And the more lessons you learned over time, you make less mistakes and then become consistently profitable. So stick with it. And uh, without further ado, let's just dive into the charts now. So we're going to take a look at ES right now. I'm on the four hour chart. Basically, I was in a short. I'm still in the short. I got in an entry of 41.72 and we sold off aggressively and we, we, we traded all the way down into the uh, 41.10 area. That was the last video. I, I recorded last video Wednesday. We were trading down here and my short entry was 41.72. So yeah, you know, it, it hurts to uh, have our entry come, to have the ES come right back to our entry and actually go above our entry. But I personally think that was one last spike to stop out shorts before we continue down. And I am actually quite confident right now that that was the high at 41.89. And now we're gonna start trading down lower and, and, and making lower highs. But one thing I'm still aware of is that that may not have been the high and we could sweep the 4210 liquidity. So a few things I want to take a look at, right? So if you see on the ES chart right now, I got in that short. We swept all highs right here at uh, 4177. I got in that short Wednesday and my average is right now 4170. I'm saving one more ad in case we do sweep highs and target the 4210 liquidity. So let me zoom out. My chart's going to look really crowded with a bunch of little words, but just bear with me here. There was this high we made back February 2nd at 4209. If we do want to go higher, we want to take out these shorts before continuing lower. So since we're so close, we swept all these highs here, except this one at 4194 and one more at 4209. So if there was more, one more spike, I think personally, we would go just above 4210 and then trade lower. That's why my short entry, if you're watching the, the video I put out Wednesday, I started shorting at 41.72 right here, and uh, my stop was 42.50. So my stop is up here, giving some room to spike and take out shorts up here. Before we trade lower into these fair value gaps drawn on the four hour chart, down at about 4,000. I am anticipating uh, basically a low on the ES to be roughly end of April, possibly pushing into the beginning of May, but end of April, between 39.80 and 40.10. 39.80 on the daily chart is uh, sweeping this low, this swing low right here where my mouse is on, on March 28th. That's a possible target. That's kind of like the deepest target I have in mind. But a target before that is uh, going to these fair value gaps down here at you know 42.20s and uh, for 40.10s. Let's take a look at something here. So yeah, there's a lot of words here, but we have an indecision candle on the daily chart. And every single time we've had an indecision candle where the VIX made new lows on the weekly, we did really push down and, and drop about 100 points on the ES in the coming few days or week. And 100 points, I'm talking from the high. So 4190, I'm honestly anticipating that ES will drop down to about 4100 or 4110 by a Wednesday. It's like midweek, I think early Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday at the latest, we fall. Uh, to about 4,100. That's why I have an alert here. Um, I grabbed some puts on Friday at the close because the VIX was so low. Uh, and I couldn't resist grabbing some some puts that are expiring in two weeks. Um, just because I think that we will honestly sweep this low here at 4,110 next week between Monday to Friday. So I'm in just a small position in puts, but I'm just holding the swing short on ES at about 4,172. Again, TP, first TP sweeping the low here next week at 4,100. I'm gonna go into some examples. So the first example I wanna show is on the VIX. So if you go over to the VIX, you'll see that we did trade below the trend line. This is the trend line that we've been respecting all the way back since 2017. You'll see we made some dip belows, but then right back up. So here we really went right below. And if you take a look at this on the weekly chart, I back tested a few things where every time on the VIX, we have made a new lower low on a weekly bar that's engulfing. The, the next weekly bar uh, actually pushes up. ES sells off about 100 points that, that week. Let's go in order here. So if you look at this weekly bar here, Monday, November 28th of the VIX, we took out all lows. So look to the left, this was a low, boom, we closed at this low. 
What happened the next week? So the next week started uh, Monday, December 5th. So if we go look, the VIX went up. And if you go look at ES on Monday, December 5th to the daily chart, you'll see that we actually went down about 100 points. So Monday, December 5th is right here where my mouse is. That was the start of that week. So this was the Friday. Again, an indecision candle on Friday. And then what happened? We fell 1.77% uh, on the Monday. The Tuesday, another 1.5%. So we fell 130 points in two days. And in three days, it was about 150, 160 points. So from high to low on the Monday, the high was 40.75 and the low was 39.14. So this was a 160 point drop just from Monday to Wednesday because the VIX made a new low and we started the new week and the VIX pushed up. So that's just one example. If we just use that same example here, 160 point drop uh, by Wednesday, that would be looking like uh, from, from the high, let's just say it's from this high. So 41.90, uh, 160 point drop would bring us down to 40.30. So we would drop all the way down to 40.30 where my mouse is by Wednesday. Take in how big of a drop that is. But, you know, that's just one example. I actually backtested multiple examples, and it does happen about 90 to 80% of the time. That next week, as in this coming week, we drop at least 100 points from the Friday close. So let's go back to the VIX. I'll go over another example. Let's go back to the weekly and you'll see the next example here was uh, January 9th. So again, this bar engulfed, closed below all recent lows. The next week started Tuesday, January 17th. So if you go to Tuesday, January 17th on the ES daily chart, Tuesday, January 17th, right here. So Friday was a green close at a high, just like the Friday we just had uh, this past uh, weekend. And now Tuesday uh, pushed up a little higher, but then Wednesday, Thursday. So again, the next three days. Monday was a holiday this day, so you could treat this as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Same pattern as last time. What happened? From high to low in those three days, the high on Tuesday was 40.35, and then the low on Thursday was 39.01. So 130 point drop in those three days. Again, that's like us dropping from, you know, 41.90 to 40.60 by Wednesday. That's another example. I'll go over one more example, but um, if you go look on the VIX weekly chart, you'll see this happens time and time again. So another example was uh, right here, January 30th, actually. So January 30th, boom, pushed down, made a new low. The next day was uh, Monday, February 6th. So let's go to Monday, February 6th, see what happened. Monday, February 6th. Okay, so Monday, February 6th. Friday was the end of the week. Uh, we actually closed down. Monday, we went lower. Uh, Tuesday, we met, went a little, lower, a little lower, but then pushed up. And then Wednesday, we pushed down. Thursday, we pushed down. By Friday, we were at the lows. So this one took longer. This one didn't play out right away, but by the end of the week, same idea, we dropped about 100 points because if you just take a look at, um, you know, from Friday, the close, close was 41.47. So 41.47 to the next Friday, the low was uh, 40.60. So this one was a 90 point drop. So 90 point drop the next week. Again, roughly 100 points from high to low, uh, you know, uh, from, from the close on Friday, 90 points. The close was 41.60. 90 points would bring us down to 40.70. So again, if you look where my mouse is, 4070 by the end of the week at some point is, is right about here. So all this in lines with what I'm seeing, and that's why I have a lot of confidence that um, we, we actually most likely put in the high on Friday. Again, very possible we push up on Monday and just go a little you know, 10, maybe 20 points higher. But I really don't expect us to go much higher because of all the divergences and the huge case I see building with HYG, uh, the Dow Theory crash. There's a whole host of things that I've, I've been showing on this channel of reasons why I think we are gonna sell off uh, about 100 points. Let me show you this, this FIB retracement that I'm seeing on the four hour chart with NASDAQ and uh, on ES. So currently from this high, we made a low and we pushed up. We pushed up into the 70% retracement and NASDAQ pushed up um, 
from the high we made to the low into about the 0.78. So we didn't get above this level. If I am correct in this being the high, then we will not make a higher high than the 786. So meaning on NASDAQ, we won't get to 13,220. If we do, then it's highly likely that we are gonna sweep the high one more time before going lower. And then on ES, back to the Fib retracement here, um, basically not getting to four, not getting above 4180. If we get above 4180, then it's likely we're gonna just sweep one more high. That's why I actually wrote this right here. ES should not go above, uh, higher than 4180. Again, if it does, sweeping 4210 one more time before trading lower into the end of April, which is a very high probability because of, if you take a look at the HYG. HYG, we have the severe negative divergence. It's formed even more. So look where my mouse is, uh, Friday the 31st to uh, April 14th. And even from these two highs, April 13th to April 14th, we made a lower high. April 13th to April 14th, we made a higher high. So ES made another higher high. So it's like a multiple point divergence between smart money flow and ES. Huge confluence pointing to this likely being the high. Dow three crash signal, we've went over this a few times. Again, uh, it's been making lower highs ever since uh, the Dow and ES has been making higher highs. So look at these recent peaks here. If you take a look, Friday, March 31st, Wednesday, April 12th, and then off Friday, April 14th. So remember, Friday 31st, April 12th, Friday, April 14th, lower, lower, lower. And then if you go look at ES, we go to the uh, 31st, 31st is right here, 4140, new high. Then we go to April 12th, 4178, higher high. And on the 14th, higher high. So we have a triple uh, negative di divergence there between the Dow transports, likely pointing to the high. And uh, one more I wanted to take a look at was the uh, put to call ratio. So I like to go to the fear and greed index and I've noticed a trend, especially since, since the bear market started. Every time you see right here, the put and call ratio, when the put to call ratio is very high, the market makers wanna stop out shorts. So squeezing shorts out, pushing the market up higher, taking some, some stops out to get the put to call ratio down so they don't pay out a lot of people that are heavy into puts. Now, when this goes lower and very low, it means there's a lot of calls in the market. So when there's a lot of calls in the market, market makers wanna drop the market very fast, stop out some longs before bringing it back up. So I've noticed every time we get down to about 0.8 or as low as you know the very high 0.7s, like 0.78, it marks a serious top. And you can go back to this, but if you look at February 2nd, that was the um, peak uh, before we sold off about 200 or 300 points. And right now we made a, another lower low. Again, this is possible. Um, you know, we're at 0.85. We could uh, go even higher on the ES and then this put to call ratio could go even lower down to about 0.8, just like February 2nd. That's where I think it's possible we stop out shorts one more time. We get the put to call ratio down to 0.8 and we got uh, ES to about 42.20 and then we go lower. That's the limit in my opinion, or we just start going down now about 100 points and uh, stop out some longs and see a spike in the put to call ratio. So just keep in mind when this is very low, um, it means that we're close to a top. When this is very high at point one, at 1 1.1 or 1 1.2, we are very close to a low. And you'll notice that March 15th, that was a low. So it was a good time to go long. So just you're just going inverse of these things. So that's uh, one last thing I wanna show you. On top of the fact that, uh, you know, so the, we still have a bunch of these fair value gaps to visit and um, the targets are the lows. That's why I think now, if we did put in a high, you just have to ask yourself, okay, if this is the high, where would we be going next? Well, we'd be, we'd be taking out some swing lows. So the first one was the one made on Thursday, April 13th at 41.09. And then, and then we have a bunch of lows sitting right at 40.90s and a fair value gap sitting right here between 4087 and 4096. So this is a big target in my opinion. Uh, I think this one's gonna be hit very soon between 4087 and 4099. Uh, and that's why I have that alert here to close my puts. Uh, but yeah, first target on the downside, I am looking for that 4108 sweep this low and then these fair value gaps down here at some point at the end of April. So again, the upside is very limited. I, I post that in the video on, on Wednesday. 
And um, that's all I wanted to go over. Right, the last thing I want to go over actually is the dollar because the dollar did sweep this low and now we're pushing up. So now I I think this is, is a real probability we do push up to this 103 area. Um, you know, the dollar just wanted to stop out this short, this swing short right here before going higher. So I think now we're really going to see that rotation and push up into 103. And with that, uh, you know, NASDAQ, S&P 500 is going to start having some, some weakness because when that dollar pushes up, stocks tend to sell off a bit. So, you know, that's exactly what I'm looking at. Again, we have this huge divergence from, uh, you know, March 6th to April 14th of higher highs on the ES and same time frame, lower lows on Dow Transports. And then one last thing was on the uh, HYG. HYG is high yield corporate bonds, smart money flow. Same idea, uh, divergence here, a very slight one where we went lower and we made a lot of higher highs on the ES. So that's going to conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, look out for the next video coming out Wednesday. I'm going to do a midweek market update. I am currently positioned short in uh, ES right there at you know 41.70. Like I said, my stop is 42.50 and I am targeting down here uh, 4,000 by the end of April. So thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you in the next one.